how did back in the olden days of what we called the 1970s and 1980s if you bought one of these in a shop world war ii german gas mask tin doesn't matter about the pattern um the chances are there'd be something inside it and it would still retain the straps that go on it nowadays with the passage of time what you tend to find is if an item can be taken apart and sold off in its components people will take it apart and sell it off in its component parts because they get more money for it and let's face it nowadays if you have an empty gas mask tin you're not going to buy a tin with a mask in it you're going to want the mask separately if you have a mask but no tin you're going to look for the tin but no mask if you have the straps you're not going to look for the tin with a mask and the straps you're just going to look for the straps so nowadays people take these things apart and they sell the bits separately um, this video is a kind of instructional thing of how to put the straps onto a German gas mask tin. Doesn't matter if it's the long pattern tin or the short pattern tin, the straps are the same. Basically, for the purpose of this video, this is the short bottom strap with the little loop on it. Ignore this strap being on this gas mask tin because I can't get it off. It's been on there that long that the end has kind of welded itself into a weird bump and it won't pull through the loop anymore. But basically, on your World War II gas mask tin, and I might have to adjust the focus for that, which, wait a minute. Bingo. On your World War II German gas mask tin, I'm out of focus, but this isn't. On your World War II gas mask tin, you have these two loops at the top, and you have the one loop at the bottom. Okay, that loop there. Now, these two loops, I'm out of focus again, these two loops back in, are for two olive green webbing straps which enable the soldier to put the tin onto his body and loop it up under the combat belt. Without those loops you are not going to be able to wear this. So nowadays people look for the straps to go on it but when they get the straps to the post they go how do all these go together? Now there's three different options as to which type of strap you use. You can either buy the World War II genuine ones, and as I say, people do take these apart. You can buy the World War II genuine ones, which tend to be a little bit expensive, and they tend to be a little bit frayed, a little bit damaged. You can buy the post-war Bundeswehr ones for the World War II style Bundeswehr mask, which it's kind of, it looks more like a thermos flask. You've seen them on eBay, but the straps are still the same. But the problem is, the Bundy straps and the World War II straps they look the same and they do the job, but unless you knew the difference between the two, you could be sold post-war Bundy straps, thinking that they are World War II German straps and you might pay more money for them, thinking you've got genuine when you've got post-war. The other option, the third option, is that you can buy reproduction ones nowadays. And yes, you can buy reproduction gas mask straps for your gas mask tin. And even today, I never thought I'd live to see this, you can even buy Repro gas mask tins. This is an original one which we've covered in a previous YouTube video, but you can even buy now reproduction gas mask tins, which I never thought I'd ever look to see that. Now, when you get your straps through the post, you get a short strap with a metal, let's do that again. You get a short strap with a little metal thing on like that. And you also get a kind of long strap with two holes in it and it's a really long strap which culminates in a buckle and somewhere on it you may or may not get a label sewn on it with the guy's name on it sometimes you do sometimes you don't anyway but what you should always get with these straps are and i hope i haven't dropped them anywhere are these two little metal buttons okay now if you don't have these two buttons then you are not going to get the straps to work properly because you need these two buttons to secure the straps to the tin um if you don't have them then i suppose they are very similar if not identical to the little buttons used at the end of the K98 leather rifle sling and the MP40 sling so that might be a good source for these little buttons anyway so you need two of them for your straps 99 times out of 100 if you buy repro straps they will not come with 
these little button assembly things so you may have to source them from a totally different source don't know where you get them from but you might have to look for them so when you get these and you've got them we'll now go into how it all goes together now when the German soldier wears your gas mask tin the long strap kind of his head goes through the long strap and it kind of goes down the body to the back and the short strap goes between the wearer's back and the combat belt and the little hook hooks onto the combat belt that's how the guy wears it that's how he balances it if you have the long strap but not the short strap you're not going to be able to wear it properly so yes in order for your world war ii german gas mask tin to function properly you're going to need two straps and you are going to need two of these little button type things okay so when you get them and i may need to know i'll leave that as it is when you get them your short strap let's assume this this strap isn't actually attached to this particular tin your short strap goes through the bottom loop but it goes through the bottom loop with the hook facing the tin okay so the hook faces the tin as you pull it through you marry up the two holes there's a hole in there there's a hole in there and you push one of these through the holes and that secures it together now i'm going to see if i can do this with one hand which i'm probably not going to be able to do but there you go that's one maybe through it but then again maybe not right that's one through and then you offer the other side up to it and you clip the other one through i'm going to drop that one on the floor so i'll put it in the pocket you then offer the other one up to it and you clip it through now the reason why that goes up against the tin is because when it's worn on the guy's belt it's kind of worn in that fashion so it's kind of worn in if, if the guy's back is towards you it's worn down the side of the body and this goes behind the leather belt and that clips over the leather belt so that's how the bottom one's worn it goes up against the tin hook first and then when it's worn on the body it turns and it clips behind and over the leather combat belt now with this other one you have as we said an end with two holes and a buckle one end goes through this side no it doesn't it goes through this side loop first so this one goes through there which is going to be extremely difficult to do because the end's gone on this one so i might i might need something to push this one through so that goes maybe maybe not it's not going to do it hang on a sec don't recommend you do this but that needs must when the devil's at the door you push that one through there okay so what we do is we've pushed that one through there we pull it down like that bringing this buckle to there like that and then what we do is we take the end and we need to pass this end through both parts of the buckle so one end goes through there like that so one end goes through there like that and the other end if i get this right passes through the other side of the buckle and you see by passing it through there like that 
Okay, that's that's the spare end. Pass it through there like that. What that gives you is a loop. Okay. Now you need a fairly biggish loop. And what happens is this remaining end passes through the other bracket. So we'll pass that through the other bracket and try and get it the right way around. I'm probably going to put this on the wrong way around. But we'll push that through this other bracket. If we can get it in again. That's a wider one. So that end passes through the bracket. And then what happens is next, where we put it at, this other button here passes through one hole and it passes through the other hole and it traps the end in that bracket. So we'll just push this one through. Bear with me a minute. It goes through that one. That goes through that one. Now what you're left with now is a kind of three thing like that. One big loop and if you need it bigger all you do is you pass one end through the buckle and it makes it bigger, makes it smaller just depending on how big the guy is it has to go on then what you do is in order to wear it you kind of you're maybe not going to be able to do this properly but what you do is you kind of I mean this is, this is going to be a fairly short one but what you kind of do is that goes, your head goes through there that goes kind of down the side of the body the gas mask is kind of down here somewhere which you're not going to see but when it's kind of worn across the body like that it makes the kind of if I can hold this up like this it makes the lid accessible so you can get the mask out and then that little that little strap at the bottom what that does when it's worn at that angle that strap as I've said goes between the guy's back the small of his back or his waist and the leather belt and clips over the top and that's all there is to it so with this mod that will take a look at the bits and pieces as they've been fitted so this is the long strap with the buckle that's where it's fixed at at one point that's where it loops through at the start so you take this end you start by looping it through there then you take it through one side of the buckle you take it through the other side of the buckle then you continue it through that one and then you put the little button through it the short one you put it through that way so the hook is against the tin you push the button through it when this is worn on the combat belt it's worn like that it twists like that and what you find is this short strap is harder to get than the long strap as a genuine one because of the way that it's twisted around it tends to fray and wear out more often and usually that's the one that will damage first so it doesn't matter what it is whether it's genuine post-war bundy or a repro that's how they go together but in all instances you need two straps the long one and the short one and you need two of these little button things without these button things you're not going to get them to mount on your gas mask properly bye for now